Uh, hi there, Brian Vicente here uh, from Vicente Cedarburg. Thanks for tuning in to this week's weekly update. Uh, we'll start just uh, really broad this week. Uh, Uruguay, down in so South America, uh, just took a major step towards becoming the first country in the world to legalize marijuana. Um, I was actually down there and, and I did a briefing for their presidential cabinet a couple months ago on what was going on in Colorado, and they're very interested. And now it looks like they may actually uh, pass this law. So that would be a wonderful thing, not only for the people of Uruguay, but also provides cover for places like Colorado, you know, so we have you know, friends in this fight. Um, from there, I just wanted to, to another major victory it was Illinois. Pat Quinn, the governor up there, just actually signed a medical marijuana law. They became the 20th state, uh, obviously a major populated state, so it's a very big deal. It's in the Midwest as well, so it sort of sends this strong message that medical marijuana is everywhere. Um, we are actually going to be doing a seminar up there on August 22nd uh, at the Blackstone Hotel in downtown Chicago. If you're interested, uh, we would love to have you there, so let us know, but very positive thing. Uh, another just general update, and then I'll, I'll, I'll jump through some of the specifics of what the state task force has been up to. But Denver uh, looks like it's probably going to be moving forward with a 5% local tax. That's in addition to the... Um, uh, the 15 and 10 percent taxes which the state is going to be voting on or people are going to be voting on statewide this November. Um, so Denver may slap on an additional 5 percent. It could be as low as 3.5 percent. We're not exactly sure. We'll know uh, probably next week, but that will be voted on as well this November. And that's for uh, the recreational sales, not medical sales. Um, so we have had members of our staff at every single uh, work group meeting. I think everyone knows the Department of Revenue established three work groups to uh, sort of finalize the, the emergency rules for these new recreational businesses. We think a lot of the rules they create will actually apply to medical businesses as well. So they're really worth paying attention to. Uh, Christian's on one of the, the panels and, and uh, our policy analyst Andrew attends every meeting. So some, just some very quick highlights from those meetings. Um, the uh, licensed premised work group uh, started delving into the issue of you know, how should uh, occupational licenses work? If I want to uh, work at a recreational marijuana st store, it looks like I will have to have a valid occupational license from the state in hand. As many of you know, it takes a while to get those occupational licenses. So what they've said is I could, if I have a medical marijuana occupational license, but I now want to want to work at a retail facility, that will suffice until they get the backlog um, going. Um, beyond that, you know, they are discussing what should happen if there's an emergency at a grow or something and, and a, someone has to come in as a plumber or you know, electrician or something like that. And it looks like those folks will just have to sort of sign in and out and get, do a vendor registration. Won't have to get a special bag or a badge to do that. Um, in terms of waste, it seems like the way they're landing on this is, is uh, you know, marijuana waste will not only have to be ground up, it will have to be indistinguishable from your average waste, which is dirt and whatnot. So again, these is, this is where they're heading with these rules. These aren't finalized, but when they are, we will let you know. The second of the three working groups is the uh, inventory tracking working group. They've been looking at um, you know, how can business owners effectively track their, their, their product as it moves through. They be I believe they're heading towards allowing 100% uh, electronic tracking as opposed to just paper tracking. So the paper manifest may be a thing of the past. Um, uh, so it looks like they're going to allow things to be done electronically, which you think we think is positive. They've also been discussing intellectual property. Uh, you know, what if? Uh, how does it relate to people that have, uh, you know, intellectual property built into their infused product or their line of baked goods? And it looks like they're probably going to take a pass on this and not regulate it at the state level, and probably leave it more up to uh, you know state courts or perhaps the legislature to figure out what to do here instead of the Department of Revenue. The final working group uh, is the enforcement working group. Um, they've basically just been talking about you know what are the what are the serious penalties that a store could engage in or be caught doing that would allow a summary suspension? So a, a, an enforcement officer could just say, you are without a trial, just suspended. And of course, those will be the most serious offenses of all. Um, so they're trying to figure out what those are. And uh, sort of a note here is you know, they are leaning towards really if not requiring, strongly recommending that every business out there has an employee handbook that lays out you know, what are the very serious 
matters that every employee should know, uh, you know, no smoking on site, no selling after hours, things like that. Probably having them, you know, sign this handbook so they, so you can show the enforcement division that you've in fact trained your staff on this. And I will say at a number of hearings we've had and meetings we've had with the MED lately, you know, they have really pushed for um, the, these handbooks. You know, if people get in trouble, they want them to, to be sure that they've created these handbooks and they've signed off. Um, our law firm has, you know, written some of these handbooks. We're happy to, to share those with you, or if you want to write one on your own, that, that makes sense as well. But just an important thing to think about uh, for the betterment of your business. So that's it for this week, and uh, please give us a call if you need anything. Take care.